Tennille, Tennille, Tennille. Turn me up, Justin. Seriously, turn me up. Way up. Way up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Hi. Hey. Guys, give it up for Captain and Tennille and Tennille. I actually don't even have my note card here right now. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill in the gap a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a project long time coming. And uh, with you, you're next week. Okay, you guys. This is really exciting. And uh, I'm very. Can you turn me up again more? Can you turn me up again, like all the way? Like all the way? Yeah. Seriously. I want to. And also, can you turn the echo? That's all right! Guys, I'm super excited about this next thing. This is a mystery performance by Madeline Tess Peters. Give it up for Madeline Tess Peters, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Madeline. Can I just use this one in the middle? Can I use this one? Hi, everybody. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about mysteries before we start. And if I could have everyone that's here come a little bit closer to the stage. Yeah, you could just gather a little bit closer. OK, great. Meredith, you can go ahead and start playing that first song. This is not the performance yet, but it kind of is, right? Okay. First song. So what I need everybody to do in the audience is I need you to close your eyes. Okay, great, thank you. And now what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna, uh, Crawford, close your eyes. Um, I need you to put your fist down in front of you, not in an aggressive way, just hold it there in front of you. And I want you to clench it as tight as you possibly can. Right? And now I want you to open it as slowly as possible. And I'll tell you when to open your eyes again, but for right now I want you to keep them closed, all right? So what I wanna talk to you about tonight is rituals. And a lot of the music that we listen to is part of our daily rituals, right? And so when you wake up every morning and you get up and you do those things that you do every day, slowly as possible with those fists. You guys are moving real fast. Slow it down. Okay. And I can look at you and I can probably tell a lot about your rituals by the way that you look, how your bodies are, how you present yourselves, and how you choose to perform in your everyday lives. talk to you about doing the right thing and when you do the right thing at the wrong time you get pain you have to know what season you're in you have to know your time and your rituals affect that if you do the right thing at the wrong time you're gratified but it's all about shifting your focus open your eyes and see how far your hands have gotten it's pretty cool huh what you do and how you perceive what you do are two different things a lot of the time. Sometimes you don't get as far as you want to. Sometimes you don't think that you're moving fast enough or, or going at the right speed and you think it's a race or you think you have to be somewhere at a certain time and that's not true. Your rituals can help you slow down, can help you reflect, can help you think about how you operate in your daily life. Okay, I have another test for you. I want everybody in the audience to look around and see brown. See brown in the changing leaves. Find all the things in this space that are brown. People's jackets, whatever. Brown, brown, brown. Look for brown. Does everybody find brown? Found your brown? Okay, close your eyes. Eyes closed. Close them. Now think in your minds about everything that you saw that was red. Open your eyes. Now I want everybody in this space to look for red. Look for red, look for red, look around you, look at your neighbors, look at everybody else in the crowd, see what's red. Now close your eyes again. I want you to think about everything that you saw that was red. Now think of everything that was burgundy and pink and fuchsia and all those other colors, burnt sienna, that you turned into red into your mind. You're inventing possibilities in your everyday life based on your focus and your perception. Go 
<laughs> now that changes everything. <laughs> you can open your eyes again. You know, there's a lot of things in your life that change. Like this performance for me. I started off being wanting to do this with my roommates and slowly they had other things to do and um, one of my roommates, her, her friend, a very close person that she works with, um, just committed suicide. And that's one of the reasons that we couldn't come together and do this tonight. And it brought to mind a time when, you know, somebody's death changes your perception and changes the way that your plans are made and your rituals are done. Um, and it made me think of Kathy. And everyone that knows me knows I'm a karaoke junkie. <laughs> and um, knows that that's one of my rituals. That's one of the most important rituals in my life is performing and hosting karaoke. And um, when I was thinking about what I was going to do tonight, Kathy came to mind. And who Kathy is, is she is a woman who I've never met. Um, I went to karaoke at Long John's a couple of years ago, probably five years ago at this point. And um, I got up and I sang a song and I came back down and sat at the bar. And this guy that I sat down next to, he asked me if I could sing a song for his friend Kathy, who had just died. And I went up and I sang this song and I came back and sat down and I dedicated it to Kathy. And this woman from the crowd came up to me and she was like, how did you know Kathy? I was like, I don't know her. I've never met her before. And so I introduced these two people, the man at the bar and this woman in the crowd. And um, they came together and told me all these stories about this woman and her life and everything that she had meant to both of them. They had both just come from her, from her memorial service. And the song that I sang as part of my ritual became part of their remembrance of her. And... This was at a time in my life where my grandmother had just passed away and I was feeling really intensely about life and death and reconsidering my rituals and how those worked in my life. And, and Kathy seemed like this amazing woman and they told me that she had been in so many abusive relationships and that she had tried over and over again to find love and satisfaction in her rituals in her daily life. She used to come to Long John's all the time, but she hadn't been around in a while since I had started going there because she had found this person who that she had loved and when she died, she died of a heart attack in her sleep next to this person, her partner. The first person that she had ever found who had treated her right and who had changed her life. And I just want you all to leave tonight with a sense of love and with a sense of caring for those people around you and to realize that life is really quick, you know? Sometimes it changes and it's hard, but we're all still here for each other and that's really important. So now I'm gonna sing a song for you guys. Cue <laughs> um, the next song. This one's for Kathy.
I had to leave my tears in my eyes. I didn't wipe them out because they were so real. Um, that's right. Just let them be real. Just let them be fucking real. Make it real, right? Guys, 10 minute performance festival. Let's give it up. You are in a parking lot in Maryland with like a bunch of your friends. Get excited about that. Like that's going to be so good. This is so great. It's the work of some of the most amazing people in Baltimore. Like, I feel so honored. And uh, I'm also really honored to introduce this next situation to you. Tyler. Where's Tyler? <laughs> <laughs>